Yeah, Mad Panic Gaming! Let's party! What's up, everybody? Jim here with another epic game hunt. Today, back in the neighborhood of Akihabara, where we are taking a look at wall-to-wall -wall PS1 games. We've got action titles, fighting games, shoot-em-ups, platformers, puzzlers, RPGs, you name it. They got it, so I hope you're ready because that is what's coming up next. All right, getting started with PS1 Madness. It's absolute madness today. Actually, it's not going to be that mad. It's going to be pretty mad, though. Uh, we start off with Hard Rock Cab, uh, which, again, the the U.S. title escapes me. Uh, ambitious game, though. Uh, last time I came across this on the Sega Saturn, and it's a game that kind of combines, like, Twisted Metal with Crazy Taxi. Uh, maybe a little bit of Carmageddon thrown in there. Some cool uh, cover art, though. Uh, but yeah, Hard Rock Cab. Uh, interesting uh, early PS1 title, uh, which I think was also, was it also on the 3DO or the PC, something like that. Uh, Poppin' Tanks for 5,100 yen. Uh, this is a really cool little game. Uh, it's like a car combat game, except it's one-on-one, -on -one and you got uh, cool little tanks. They look like little RC tanks, but super colorful game. And uh, very fun to play, uh, kind of an underrated gym, if you will, uh, as far as Japan exclusive PS1 games go. Uh, and there are quite a lot of PS1 games that stayed in Japan. We're going to see a few more of them throughout the video. Uh, but that is a pretty cool little game. Uh, one of the Namco museums, that's pretty cool, Dig Dug and Miss Pac-Man. I was actually playing some Dig Dug the other day. We were on a, one of our arcade runs. And uh, I'm, uh, I still got it when it comes to the old Dig Dug. I can still handle my business. Uh, Dino Crisis, 700 yen, super cheap. Uh, this game was uh, quite exciting to play back in the day. Resident Evil meets Jurassic Park, sign me up. Uh, we really should get a new uh, Dino Crisis game, I think. If, if um, I think Universal Studios, if they can keep pushing out those crappy Jurassic World games, I think we could stand to get another Dino Crisis game. What do you think? Uh, we got some of these really cool Square uh, Millennium Collection uh, things. We got Xenogears and Brave Fencer Musashi, which I like a lot. I don't know what all's in there. I should pick one of those up one of these days. We got, uh, for 5800 the PS1 version of Rockman X3, uh, which, aside from some really cool anime cutscenes, uh, which you're seeing... Uh, some of the intro here. Uh, aside from that, the graphics haven't been changed at all, really, from the Super Nintendo game. Uh, the soundtrack has gotten an upgrade, though. Uh, so it's a pretty cool version of the game. You get animated cutscenes, you get an updated soundtrack, and you still get to play good old Mega Man X3, uh, which is a damn fine game. I would say, like, the first six Mega Man Xs are all... Uh, pretty damn good, with the first game in uh, particular being one of my favorite games ever. Uh, we got Gradius Gaiden here for 4300 There's a little bit of damage to the disc, it says. Gradius Gaiden, awesome game. Console exclusive, if I'm not mistaken. Um, really great game. Uh, between this and, like, Gradius 3 and Gradius 5 as well. Uh, just some of my favorite shooters ever. Uh, and the graphics were awesome. It had almost like a, like the, the sprites almost had, um, I don't know, a little bit of a metal sluggish look to them. And there's some cool 3D effects as well. Some very trippy stages. 1900 for Ghost in the Shell. This game is still a uh, fairly inexpensive uh, game. I absolutely loved uh, back in the day. I uh, ended up trading, I think, a, a Street Fighter game to get it from a friend. And uh, I was such a big fan of the animated movie from 1995 that as soon as I found out there was an actual Ghost in the Shell video game, uh, my mind exploded. Like, I, I had to play it. And it's pretty cool. You got your spider tank, you crawl it around, your Fujikoma, and you go around blowing a lot of stuff up. 
and then you get a bunch of really cool cutscenes, and they had the English voice cast as well. I remember that uh, from the movie, so I absolutely love that. Uh, X-Men vs. Street Fighter EX Edition. Some MDK and Vampire Savior EX for 2,000 yen. Very inexpensive. That's only like maybe $13, 13 or 14, aka Darkstalkers 3. 500 yen for X, the selection of Destiny, uh, which itself is based on the X uh, anime that I think came out in like 2000 or something like that. I remember uh, seeing it back in the day. It's based on X, but it's essentially it's Psychic Force 2. Uh, but reskinned with the characters from X. So it is pretty cool. Uh, we got some Capcom versus SNK Pro 6200. Again, all these Capcom 2D fighters, the PS1 versions, I mean, they're not going to be better than the Saturn or the Dreamcast versions, but if all you had was a PS1, uh, they're playable. They're still fun games. Uh, we got Klonoa here for 1300 with no manual. Although now I do have the uh, Klonoa collection on the Switch. Uh, one of the Gambare Goimon games, I'm going to go ahead and recommend uh, good buddy Jimmy Hoppe, his channel Import Gaming for the Win. Uh, he has reviewed the PS1 Gambare Goimon games. Uh, so I'm going to put a link in the description. I uh, go and check out his video for more details. Uh, because while I myself am not super familiar with them, uh, he is like the go-to guy. He's the authority. Uh, I'm more a fan of the SNES Gambari Goemon games. We've got Cyberbots Full Metal Madness. Uh, again, a game I know mostly for the Sega Saturn. Uh, the PS1 port is admirable, but now you can also play it as part of the Capcom Fighting Collection on modern consoles. And uh, that's just fine with me. We also have Thunder Force 5. Ladies and gentlemen, Thunder Force 5 still pretty cool. Uh, I, I tend to prefer the Sega Genesis games, um, but this one's awesome, and you can like pan around, as you can see, so you can fire in front of you, you can fire behind you, get all kinds of cool power-ups, great graphics, good soundtrack, um, but yeah, definitely a different experience from the 16-bit Thunder Force games, uh, but a game I think uh, shoot 'em up fans would definitely still enjoy, and we're moving right along with uh, Speak of the Devil, Psychic Force 2, 2,800 yen. Uh, I'm a huge fan of the Psychic Force series. I played uh, all three of them. Uh, the first couple of games on the PS2 and then Psychic Force 2012 on the Dreamcast. I played that game to hell and back. Uh, I really do like the series. I'd love to see it make some kind of a modern comeback. Just a, a free-flying fighting game. It's a really cool concept. I think you could do something with that these days make an updated version of that. What else we got here? We got some Star Gladiator for 300 yen, so they're practically giving it away. Uh, that was one of the first PS1 games I ever played back in the day. I, first guy I ever knew had a PlayStation had Star Gladiator Tekken and Battle Arena Toshinden. Uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 2900 on the PS1. The PS1 version actually has uh, some pretty cool additional uh, gameplay stuff in the story mode. I think a whole additional story mode that wasn't in the Dreamcast version. It's got some fun mini games and things in it. Uh, so I really do like that version of the game. Uh, and that was Sudagaya. I didn't even mention that. We were just in Sudagaya. Uh, and now we could only be in one place. It is Retro Game Camp. And they actually have a pretty extensive selection of PS1 games here. A lot of good stuff too. First up, uh, this one, uh, Inuyasha on the PS1. I remember buying this back in the day. I can't remember if I bought it at like a Walmart or somewhere else, but this was released like way late in the PS1's lifespan. I think it was brand new. It was $10. So it was really, as, at release, it was a bargain bin game. Very simple fighting game, but uh, still fun enough. And if you were a fan of Inuyasha, uh, which I actually wasn't, I like I knew of Inuyasha, it was airing on Toonami. Uh, but I had never really watched much of it. Uh, but I did end up picking up the game just because it was so uh, inexpensive. Rave? Okay, uh, whatever Rave is. I'm not 100% sure. It is Konami, though. And we have the Japanese version of Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? So there you go. That's uh, Japanese Regis for you. He kind of looks like a Japanese Regis, doesn't he? He looks like he's supposed to be hosting a game show. I'm sure he did a great job. You can't top Regis, though. 
Regis will always be the man. We got Star Ocean Second Story. Love it. One of my favorite RPGs ever. Another copy of Star Gladiator. 780. So more than double the price of uh, what it was at Sudagaya, but it is more complete. Um, this, what the hell do we have? Star, Star Borders, okay. Star Borders, uh, I, I don't know what I thought this was, game was gonna be. Uh, it's kind of an on-rail shooter though. I think this is another one that was Japan exclusive. Even though it was published by Acclaim, you would think Acclaim would want to publish these games uh, in the US as well, but they did not, so Star Borders. Uh, I was expecting, um, what is it, uh, Colony Colony Wars, but I did not get Colony Wars. We got all the Street Fighter Zero games, and of course they're all awesome, 1, 2, and 3, but 3 is my favorite. 3 is probably my all-time favorite 2D fighter. Tekken 3, one of my favorite 3D fighters. Uh, we just got more, more, more. We got all the Crash Bandicoot games, we got another copy of Gradius Gaiden, 2980. Not too bad on that, I suppose. But, um... We got all the, the Crash Bandicoots, we got all of the uh, Final Fantasies, a whole lot of stuff like that. We've got some Crazy Climber for you, uh, which I guess it's got original Crazy Climber and an updated version on it. Crazy Climber is pretty cool. I had an opportunity to play that uh, little original arcade the other day, and it, it's uh, <laughs> I was having some trouble with it, but it's still a lot of fun. Clock Tower 2. Um, excellent game. Of course, we got it in the United States as just Clock Tower. Uh, the original Clock Tower was a Super Famicom game, but I do remember playing this as a kid at a sleepover with my friend. We had rented it, uh, and it was decidedly spooky. And I do like that they used Jennifer Connelly as the basis for their, their main character. Ge -ge -ge no Kitaro Kane, the vampire, uh, aka Blood Omen Legacy of Kane. I can remember playing this one. Uh, as a young lad and just being blown away it was like the first ever like I felt like really adult game I was playing the subject matter uh, the violence and the voice work was just like next level at the time Street Fighter collection 2780 that's got some good stuff on it it's got uh, I think alpha 2 and it's got super turbo but I think it also just has like super why would you have just regular super if you already have super turbo uh, EX plus alpha Great game, love it, played it extensively as a kid. It's still very fun to this day. And uh, has a pretty sweet soundtrack as well. Kind of an oddly groovy soundtrack. Uh, but that is a great game. I actually like it better than the sequels, even though the sequels did some cool stuff. Uh, that original will always be my fave. Another copy of X-Men vs. Street Fighter 2280. And it is the EX edition. And Jordan is back. NBA Live. And he's not in the Wizards at that point, so that's nice. I, I, I saw a game somewhere. It had Jordan on the cover in his Wizards uniform. I was like, oh, that's no good. Uh, we got Biohazard. We got Director's Cut. We got the original Biohazard. We got Biohazard 2. Uh, all the good stuff. I do love finding a Biohazard game, like, complete with the spine card and everything. Uh, just really cool, creepy cover art. <laughs> and uh, Zombie getting himself in shape. You know, if you're going to have a video game appearance, you want to be in shape, right? Um, somebody at once told me that if you had a certain version, like a first printing of the original Biohazard, it was, like, super valuable. You had to, like, look on the disc somewhere. I don't know. Uh, I never did quite figure out what he was talking about. Poyo Poyo Sun for 780. It's Poyo Poyo Sun. Uh, one of my favorite puzzle games ever. I love the whole series. Uh, but you can't go wrong with uh, any of them, but Poyo Poyo Sun especially I like a lot. And they're all so cheap. Like, Poyo Poyo games just sold like gangbusters. So anytime you find one, it's always like five bucks or less. Uh, so if you like a good puzzler and you're on a budget, Poyo Poyo is always there for you. Uh, we got a lot more good stuff here, including Fatal Fury, uh, Wild Ambition, which... Um, I, I, not a popular game, to say the least, like this, and I think there was a 3D uh, Samurai Showdown as well, and uh, I played both of them back in the day, rented them, and uh, remember having fun with them at the time, I mean, they, they look decent and all, but, uh, you know, it's hard to recapture that same magic you get with 2D SNK fighting games, you know, like, Fatal Fury Special is one of my all-time favorites, I like the real bout games as well. 
Um, but you, they just weren't going to be able to re recreate that in 3D at the time. But a really great 3D fighter, uh, Justice Gakuen, Rival Schools, one of my all-time favorites. So, you know, that's like uh, both companies, Capcom and SNK, they've had their odd ventures into 3D fighting games. SNK could seemingly never get it done with 3D, even those... What were those King of Fighters Maximum Impact games? Like, I don't I don't know. They just, they weren't going to hold a candle to Tekken or Dead or Alive. Uh, but hey, what can you do? Hello, Gundam. Uh, we got some accessories and other various things here. Um, but yeah, Retro Game Camp. Big wall full of PS1 games. Now we're in Trader. And then Trader is another place. Uh, they're always going to have a ton of PS1 games. Get that bass out of here. I'm not exactly... A bass fishing game enthusiast. Sorry to say. Uh, Bushido Blade 2 for 980 yen and it's complete. A very inexpensive game. Um, I can't tell you, the original Bushido Blade especially, uh, me and my friends just playing that game for hours and hours and hours on end. Just dueling, um, having just the time of our lives. What a time to be a gamer, right? <laughs> Square is just doing all this... Random experimental stuff, Bushido Blade, Einhander, Air Guys. They were really taking some risks back then. 2180 on Rockman 3, Complete Works. So these are all very cool. I love the cover art on all of them. They got uh, three, they've got six. They got Rockman 8 there, the uh, greatest hits version. Uh, we got this one, a uh, fun game, Pop and Pop. Um, so, I mean, kind of similar to Puzzle Bobble, but uh, not really. You're busting all these balloons here. And a really fun game, and when you're playing Versus, you get all these different uh, Taito characters to choose from. Uh, and that's a lot of fun. But just, yeah, just, you know, a classic, very fun, very colorful uh, Taito puzzle game with very nice visuals and a catchy little soundtrack on it, too. That's a good one. I can recommend that one. Ray Storm for $18.80. Surprisingly inexpensive. Uh, this game is awesome. It is the sequel to Layer Section. I prefer Layer Section, a.k.a. Galactic Attack. Uh, but this game is excellent, too, as is the other sequel, Ray Crisis. Of course, now they can all be played as part of the Ray's Arcade Chronology. It's got all three games, plus HD versions of Ray Crisis and Ray Storm. Uh, I featured that in a video some time ago. Uh, so those games are awesome. They're great on the PlayStation and on the Sega Saturn. Uh, but you can get them now on your Switch and I think your PS4 as well. So you might as well go for that. Uh, this something especially cool. Uh, Castlevania Chronicles. Uh, very cool game. So you get to play, I think it was the Sharp X68000 version of Castlevania. And then an arranged version with updated graphics and updated music. Really excellent soundtrack on this thing. Um, stiff in the gameplay department, to be sure. Um, uh, playing a game like this after being a fan of Super Castlevania 4 for so many years, it's kind of... It, it doesn't hold a candle to good old Castlevania 4, but it's fairly fun. Uh, and again, the novelty of playing the X68000 version, plus having that awesome soundtrack, it makes it all worth it. Uh, 14,600 yen, so that's about a, well, n not a hundred bucks, probably under a hundred bucks, but Pepsi Man, uh, which is a fun game, but it's also a very short game. When it was released, it was released as a budget title, I believe, because it's just, you know, a promotional material for Pepsi. It wasn't meant to be taken seriously as, like, a real game, so you can finish it in, like, I don't know, what, 30 minutes? You're just Pepsi Man running around collecting Pepsis, obviously, uh, while a big fat guy pops in every once in a while to tell you you're doing a good job. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Pepsi fanatic guy. Actually, that guy was in Saw. He gets killed with razor wire. I guess that's what he gets for drinking all that Pepsi. Um, 980 for Jet Moto. Great game, classic. Again, that was one of those older games. Where it was like Jet Moto and... And uh, Twisted Metal and Loaded, like those were the games at the time. Crash Bandicoot, it was like, you gotta get a PlayStation. You gotta play these games. They're awesome. And they were. Uh, I do love me some Jet Moto. I mean, obviously the greatest thing in Jet Moto was going off of a, a huge jump and just seeing your little guy plummet down to the ground. Another copy of Cyberbots. Uh, again, excellent game. And aside, you know, like a lot of the other 
uh, Capcom 2D fighters that were released on both the Saturn and the PS1. They had like differences that made the Saturn much better. Um, honestly, the difference between the PS1 version and Saturn versions of Cyberbots is kind of negligible. It's not as deep of a chasm as like X-Men vs. Street Fighter, for example. Uh, so you may as well pick it up, or again, just pick up that Capcom fighting collection. Strider 1 and 2, very awesome. I do like me some Strider 2, even though I never really got into uh, the original Strider. Zoids! Zoids. Never had any interest in Zoids as a kid. I was too lazy. I didn't... I could never... Anything I had to put together, like, as a kid, I never liked Legos, I didn't like Zoids, I didn't like model kits and things. Uh, I didn't like anything I really had to construct. I just wanted action figures, ready to go, right out of the box, baby. I was a lazy kid, I guess. Spider-Man, the original Spider-Man, I remember liking that game a lot. Was it made by, what, Neversoft? I remember Spider-Man being in Tony Hawk. Uh, 1180 on King of Fighters 96. A uh, good King of Fighters game. And that's like, what, a $7 game? That ain't bad. The Combini 2 for 380 yen. They're practically giving this one away. Uh, in case you ever wanted to, I don't know, get the experience of managing your own convenience store, uh, this is the game for you. Or at least one of them. This is the second game. I wonder what kind of improvements they made over the original <laughs> Combini. But uh, I, I, I don't know. I wonder what kind of person played that game back in the day. Managing my own convenience store? That's always been my dream. Uh, Capcom Generations 5, whatever the hell's in there. I don't know because I didn't take it off the shelf. Uh, some Castlevania. Uh, looking damn good. Akumajo, Dracula X, Symphony of the Night, 5880. That cover art is epic. Definitely better than uh, the uh, North American cover art, I must say. Asuka, 120% Burning Fest final. Uh, this is a fighting series. There are a bunch of installments in this series. They were consistently good. I mean, nice visuals, great soundtracks, really fast, fun gameplay, fun gimmick with the 120% super combo meter. I wonder what this, you know, it's a series that just fizzled out though, uh, which is too bad. Because I think I've played every game in that series, and they're consistently good games. Uh, but they always remained exclusive to Japan, and after final, that really was the final. So, uh, Puzzle Dom over there, fun twin puzzle game. And Sol Divide, 3580. Uh, very interesting <laughs> shoot 'em up in the, um, the annals of uh, Psycho Shooters. They kind of tried to turn a shooter into a little bit of an action RPG kind of thing as well. It's, it's odd. Uh, but it's on the uh, Saturn, the PS1, and uh, also released with these Psycho collections that have uh, come out in recent years. Uh, certainly not my favorite Psycho shooter, not by a long shot, uh, but an interesting game nonetheless. Uh, but that's some trader for you. And last but certainly not least, uh, we wrap things up with that bastion of retro gaming goodness, uh, Super Potato, where they have their nice little PlayStation display and uh, what do we have here? We got some Chocobo collection for 1848. So that's about 12 bucks or so. I think it comes with Chocobo Dungeon, Stallion, and Racer. Uh, so that's pretty cool. Uh, Chocobo at one point ruling the world, or at least ruling Japan anyway. Um, but yeah, I uh, I like the the Chocobo games more or less. Chocobo Racer probably being my favorite of them though, just because I like a good kart racer. We've got a ton of RPGs here. I mean, there's Tactic Ogre, there's Front Mission, there's Parasite Eve, there's all the Final Fantasies, there's Legend of Mana, I mean, just Breath of Fire. It goes on and on and on. And, um, yeah, a bunch of the Tales games. What's great about all of these is they're all very inexpensive. Uh, RPGs sold out the Wazoo in Japan, apparently, back in the day. And if you are an RPG enthusiast, you can get them for dirt cheap. This kind of bugged me. 5478. Cyborg 009, the block, something or other. I thought this was going to be like a cool Cyborg 009 action game. Uh, so I went to go ahead and pick it up, but it was kind of expensive at over 5,000 yen. But it's just a breakout clone. And now it's, it hurts my feelings. It's what, simple 1,500 or 2,000? Like you'd buy it for like 20 bucks back in the day. Uh, we got some Puzzle Bobble 4. Some, some hot Puzzle Bobble action for you. 
Um, very competitive game, Be you know, Puzzle Bobble kind of joining in with a series like uh, Poyo Poyo and other, you know, Tetris Battle Guide in. Uh, very fun, competitive puzzle game, but you could also play the one player mode. It's twenty nine forty eight, so it's like a twenty dollar game. Not too bad. Abe ninety nine. This one's a little more expensive. Seventy one twenty eight. Um, and yeah, I just <laughs> I had to insert this here. Uh, an, a Japanese Abe commercial. Boy, the nineties were like a hell of a time, weren't they? What a great time to grow up. Um, I guess Abe was a little more popular in Japan than maybe I had previously considered, but Abe 99 is, in fact, uh, Oddworld Abe's Exodus, uh, which I played quite extensively back in the day. I had not played the original Abe game, but when Abe's Exodus came out, I had a hell of a lot of fun with that. And, of course, the first game in Japan is called Abe Go Go. Uh, PO'd, pretty cool, don't get to run into that very much, and then 5478... Uh, for the Crow, uh, the City of Angels game, so I'm not gonna, you know, uh, horrify anybody with any gameplay footage from that game. Uh, giant steaming pile of shite. Um, this appears to be just like a demo disc. It's got a Adventure of Little Ralph on it, so that's, that's still there. Uh, Rising Zan, 7678, Samurai Gunman. Uh, interesting title back in the day. I remember the adverts for this looking really cool, so I really wanted to play it. Ended up renting it, and I was like, what the hell am I doing here? It's a pretty straightforward hack and slash action game, but you're a cowboy with a samurai sword. Uh, so you, you hack and slash, and you shoot things, and it's fun. Got some cool spot. We got some more Ganbare Goimon. This, this was an interesting game back in the day as well. Very edgy for its time. Courier Crisis. Um, which looked like one of those extreme games, like too extreme. Like it had that graphic style, um, where everything seemed like pre-rendered things, but it was like three dimensional, uh, but had a play style kind of like a crazy taxi or something. You pick up a package here and you drop it off here. Um, so before there was crazy taxi, we had some courier crisis and it was like edgy. It had like a punk rock soundtrack and you had a button for flipping people off. Yeah. Uh, you know, the nineties, baby. Uh, Doom there, the PS1 version of Doom. All right, rock on. Even though my first experience with a Doom game was Doom 2 on PC. Uh, Rockman X4, my second favorite Mega Man game of all time. I tell you what though, being like eight years old, I think I was at the time, eight or nine, and then experiencing Doom 2, like going from my Super Nintendo games to just going to a friend's house who had a PC with Doom 2 on it, and just suddenly like that elevation of like, Wow, one, the graphics and everything, like this is way more advanced than anything on my Super Nintendo. But also it was so extremely violent. I was hooked. I was like, oh, can we just play this game forever? Uh, we got our Biohazard games here. And uh, for 1848, Vampire Hunter D, which is a game back in the day because it was based around Vampire Hunter D Bloodlust. You know, I absolutely loved and I had seen the reviews for it. The reviews were terrible. It, you know, it said it was just an absolutely abysmal game. I didn't care. Uh, I was such a big fan of Vampire Hunter D. I had to get it anyway. And um, I, I played through it. I finished it. I didn't think it was the worst game ever at the time, despite the reviews really shitting on it. Ghost in the Shell, another copy, twenty-one seventy-eight. Uh, so again, still in the ballpark of like fifteen bucks for Ghost in the Shell. Uh, which I believe was published by SCI. Same development team as Jumping Flash. Uh, so that's awesome. We got some shoot 'em ups. We got some Sokyu Gurentai. We got In the Hunt. We got X or is it X2? But this one right here, baby. Right in DX. Uh, this game is just non stop ass kicking, start to finish. Uh, another one I was playing recently when we did one of our uh, arcade runs. This game is just so awesome. Um, I think basically just an updated version of uh, Raiden 2. Um, and it's it's kick-ass. I don't know what else to say. It's just non-stop action, destroying everything. It, the, exactly the kind of shoot-em-up I like. Just give me some power-ups, some super bombs, and a whole bunch of enemies. Uh, with some kick-ass music and some fast action gameplay. And just let me get at it. Uh, we got some, some Darius. We got some uh, more Ray Storm, Ray Crisis. All good stuff. 
can't go wrong with any of it. Einhander over there. Love an Einhander for 49.28. And uh, for 54.78, Wolf Fang. Uh, which I had mostly played Wolf Fang SS on the Saturn, but this game is another one. That's just, it's just nonstop kick ass arcade action. Shoot everything that appears on screen. Uh, and that's exactly how I like some. Uh, great game by uh, Data East, I think, back in the day. Published by Xing, though. Man, we got more Abe 99, Tenchio Kurao 2, all good stuff. Uh, some Metal Slug X. Again, another game I was playing recently, but at the arcade. I uh, hope you guys are watching the arcade videos, by the way. Shameless self plug. Go watch my arcade videos. Uh, Spider Man 2, which was that the one, or was it the first one where Doc Octopus, Dr. Octopus, he gets the, the Carnage symbiote? And he like chases after you at the end. That was a lot of fun. Some Marvel vs. Capcom, some more Cyberbots, some Ronma one half, and the absolute classic for 5478, Bloody Roar 2. Uh, this game is just pure badass. Very fun 3D fighter, and you get to turn into animals! You turn into kick-ass animals, like wolves, and moles, and rabbits, and insect things. Some of the animals didn't make too much sense, honestly. You don't think they do great in combat. Uh, but yeah, Bloody Roar 2, absolutely awesome. Anyway, um, I had myself a lot of fun looking around at games today. This was awesome. Uh, so I hope you all enjoyed the video, and I hope you'll all uh, come back for the next one. And the video's not over yet. <laughs> Psych! <laughs> I, I was uh, a little quick on the draw there. Uh, Fatal Fury, Samurai Spirits, all the classics. Anyway, now it's really the ending. Okay, goodbye everybody.